Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I am super excited to share with you a crafty adventure that I have been working on for a while and it's to solve a very, very hard problem for me and that is fit. That's something I struggle with in both my sewing and in my costuming adventures, especially if I use any of the large commercial patterns in North America. They just never fit me because my proportions don't match what their standard view of a human body or a female body is. So. In trying to remedy that problem, I've always tried to do DIY dress forms. I've done like paper tape, I've done uh, duct tape, I've done, actually I have a recent example of a cardboard cutout that I tried uh, and all of them are great and they do get the rough shape, but they never quite get what I need. And one of the things that I think would really help this is doing an actual proper body scan. And that technology has been pretty inaccessible for a while, except recently Punish Props showed a video where he uses a app on his phone to actually scan a small object. And I was thinking maybe we could do this with a body scan. So of course I made myself a calibration suit <laughs> and dragged my poor partner into doing a body scan with this app. We did it a couple of times because trying to get the right lighting and the right angles took a little bit of figuring out, but eventually we got something that looked like this. Now it's not perfect, it's a little bit rough, but I'm pretty sure I can figure out a way to smooth it out and actually use it as a dress form in real life. The first step is going to be going into Mesh Mixer to give it a rough cut. Use the close Cracks tool to make one uniform shape and then cut it down to size so that I would only have the parts that I was interested in working with. After that, I brought it into Blender and two things can be done here. One, uh, because I'm gonna be working with it later in Fusion 360, I need to make sure that the polygon count is below 10,000. So I use the Decimate modifier to make sure that I have a mesh that's actually compatible with Fusion. And then after, I use the Smooth tool in order to actually smooth out all these like rumples and bumps all over the 3D form. Now you can use the smooth tool over the entire object and shrink it down, but it changes the proportions significantly if you do that. So instead what I did was select individual portions of the mesh that needed attention and then smooth those out in small sections. This way I was able to preserve all of my proportions and sizes correctly without disturbing too much of the overall geometry, but smoothing out all the rough bumps that the algorithm created while trying to map the photos of my body into 3D space. Once I was happy with the overall smoothness of the object, I brought it into Fusion 360 to do scaling. Now with Fusion's measure tool, you can measure any point between two sides of a mesh. So I used that tool to measure the distance between two points under my arms, which I could easily identify on the actual model. And then I used calipers in real life to get an accurate measure of that same point on my body. Then I figured out a ratio and sized the mesh accordingly. This gave me a rough estimate of the actual sizing ratio, but in pattern drafting, oftentimes you'll get landmark uh, measurements such as the circumference of the body around the full bust, the waist, and the hips. You can actually do this in Fusion 360 as well. What you need to do is basically cut your mesh along a plane at those landmark areas. So in my case, I did the full bust, the waist, and my hips. Once I separated all the different pieces, I was then able to use the measure tool to select the faces that were created and then use the loop measure that was provided on the measure tool to actually figure out what that circumference was in the 3D model versus what my measurements were. Using these measurements, I was able to compare my body measurements and the actual 3D form and tweak my ratio to get as close as I could to my measurements in real life. Once all of that was done, I then had a model that was perfectly sized exactly to me. Now I just had to figure out a way to 3D print it out into the real world. Now I could actually use a 3D printer to print it in plastic, but I wasn't really too keen on having to glue a bunch of all these pieces together and sand them. And I also wanted something that was squishy and pinnable because it makes it a lot easier to work with fabric when I can pin into the form. So that led me to two other different kinds of options for 3D printing something. And that would be using Peppercora, which is folding a flat sheet into the shape that I needed. Or I could do a topographical slicing mechanism where I basically slice the entire form into like little layers and then stack all of the layers on top of each other. I decided to go with the stacking method because it would just be easier to implement because all I needed to do is cut a whole bunch of potatoy shapes and then stack them all up together. To divide up my 3D form into these stackable slices, I'm gonna use a program called Slicer. It's by Autodesk, it's kind of deprecated, it doesn't really work on all computers, so not everyone can use it, but Blender has similar capabilities. There's actually a lot of community plugins that you can download that do the same kind of thing. 
I just happen to have slicer and I'm familiar with it, so I'm gonna use it. For my case, I decided to go with a quarter inch material because it's a good balance between insane and accurate. <laughs> The smaller the layers you have, the more accurate you get, but the more work that you need to do to cut them out. So I found quarter inch was a good medium between the two. And then I added two dowels roughly in the middle of the body so that I could use those two points to align all the shapes as I stacked them up. Once this was all done, I exported all of the shapes that I needed to cut out onto large sheets of paper and then broke down every single shape in Affinity Designer so that I could print it on my large format printer. Now I don't have a big roll printer. My printer prints uh, super B size and I actually only had 11 by 17 inch paper on hand, so that's what I used to print most of my papers. Most of the body shapes actually fit on just one sheet. There were a couple of parts around the middle that I needed to splice the sheets together, but in the end, I printed them all out, I taped them up, and we were good to go. Before cutting out all of my pieces, I decided to smooth out some of the problem areas. There were a couple of spots on the 3D model that I knew were issues with the scan, so I just adjusted those on the paper and then cut everything out. As I was cutting out the shapes, I also took time to smooth out any jagged points that I came across as I was going through each of the different layers. After all the templates were cut out, then I went and cut out all the foam. This meant that I would unroll this giant EVA foam roll, trace every single one of my templates onto this foam roll, and then sit down and hand cut each one of those 130 pieces again. This definitely took a long time, but it was so worth it in the end because I was able to use a nice squishy material and got a really good shape. Before being able to stack everything together, I had to heat treat it with my heat gun. Because the EVA foam had been rolled up in a giant roll for so long, it ended up being curved when I cut out all the pieces. So that was really easy to fix with a little bit of heat treatment and heat sealing, and then all the pieces were nice and flat and then I was able to stack them all together. To save myself a little bit of sanity, I ended up creating a little punch tool with leftover uh, PVC pipe that I was gonna use as my alignment dowel. I just sharpened the inside edges and then I was able to very quickly punch out all of my calibration holes in every single piece. Before I stacked all my layers, I cut out a copy of the bottom foam layer out of hardboard that I had lying around, and I just simply used an X-Acto knife to cut through the hardboard. It was really easy to go through it. And then I went and stacked all the layers of EVA foam on top of that, and I used that also as a base to support my uh, PVC pipes. Now, I initially started layering my EVA foam with glue in order to help keep it in place and from shifting around, but I quickly realized that I would actually need to adjust these pieces after I put the entire form together because even though I had two calibration dowels, they weren't enough to fully center everything. So I ended up stacking all the pieces together, wiggling it around so that it was perfectly aligned, and then to prevent them from moving out of place, I ended up coating the whole form in PVA glue. Once that dried overnight, I was left with a pretty accurate form. I, I was actually really impressed with how detailed the layered stacks turned out. The only thing is, as you can see, it's a little bit jaggy, but that's pretty easy to fix. All I'm gonna do is wrap it around with a little bit of quilt batting and that will smooth out the jagginess of the different stacked layers. I didn't really have a particular method for this. I kind of just draped the quilt batting with a bunch of glue and then pinched out and cut out any sort of darts that needed to be shaped in order to allow the quilt batting to form fit the actual 3D shape. And it turned out pretty well. I mean, the weird seams are kind of in strange places, but you're not really gonna see that. And it evened out the form really well. It's actually quite smooth. Now that I had my dress form in the shape that I needed it, I wanted to make it a little bit nicer to look at because it's gonna be a pretty regular fixture in my sewing room. So in order to do that, I decided to create a cover for it. To do this, I simply used the technique I always use for making patterns of 3D shapes, covered the whole thing in masking tape, and then drew on seam lines where I thought good breaks in curvature would be. Now, a lot of this was definitely experience space because I've done this so much I kind of have a rough idea of where I need to break up the curves in order to maintain those shapes in the fabric but using material that stretches a little bit also helps with this because any kind of mistakes that I make when drafting I can accommodate those shapes with a little bit of the stretch in the fabric then it was the home stretch all I had to do was trace out all the pieces onto my stretch velvet sew them up in the sewing machine put them on the mannequin and then hand sew the back seam.
create the stand for my mannequin, I used a free secondhand coat rack that I found. It was on its way to the dumpster, but I rescued it, cut it up into a couple of chunks that I could use, and then was able to screw it all back together and then attach it to the bottom of my dress form. I'm so freaking happy with how this turned out. This has been a dream for like years to have a really nice pinnable accurate dress form for myself so I could do pattern draping and pattern drafting on a separate form from my body and it would turn out exactly to my proportions. This was a project and a half. There was a lot of cutting and a lot of software but I'm so happy that we finally come to a point in technology where I could actually accomplish this. I've been struggling with this for so long and I'm really happy that I actually have an actual project that works that is exactly to my proportions and I'm really really excited to use it. Hopefully this project gives you a couple of ideas for yourself on how to tackle making your own dress form. If that's something that you've been interested in as well, definitely let me know in the comments below if you're going to be embarking on this crazy adventure as well. And I'll see you in the next video.